Hello and welcome to Alternate Football History, where we look at the great what-ifs of the beautiful game and attempt to predict what may have happened if football had taken a different course. Today we'll be asking, what if Pele had moved to Europe? Pele is widely regarded to be one of the greatest footballers of all time. A three-time World Cup winner who spent 18 years at his beloved Santos before ending his career with two years at New York Cosmos. Pele burst onto the scene at just 17 years old as he won the World Cup with Brazil in 1958 and became football's first global superstar. In his 18 years at Santos, he won six league titles and two Copa Libertadores titles. It's important to remember that in the 1960s, football was very different and the world's top players didn't just play in Europe. The Brazilian league was as good as any league in Europe and Santos were arguably the best club in the world. Many have often wondered what could have been if Pelé had played in Europe. In this hypothetical situation, the first question we must ask is when may this move have happened? Most people in Europe only ever saw Pele play at a World Cup, which would suggest he would move in one of the World Cup years of 1958, 1962, 1966 or 1970. As a 17-year-old at the 1958 World Cup, it would have been unlikely that Pele would have moved so early in his career. By 1962, Santos had just won their first of five consecutive league titles and would win two Copa Libertadores tournaments in that period. So again, he may not be quite ready to move. However, by 1966, with Santos losing their dominance in Brazil and Pele at age 25, it may have been the perfect time for him to make his move over to Europe. The next question we must ask is which club would be the one to secure what would have been one of the biggest transfers in history at the time? Pella has said himself that he was linked with Juventus, Napoli and Bayern Munich who were all interested. A key contender for the Brazilian signature would have been Inter who had just won three of the last four league titles in Italy as well as winning two European Cups in 1964 and 1965, led by the magnificent Sandro Mazzola. However, Inter were beginning a decline and would only win a single trophy over the next 11 years, the Serie A in 1971, and a club that was known for a strong defensive style of football may not have suited Pele as much as other options. Another option would have been Manchester United, who won their sixth league titles two years earlier as they began to recreate the success they had had a decade before. They would go on to win the league the next year in 1967 and become the first English club to win the European Cup in 1968. The prospect of playing alongside the likes of Bobby Charlton, George Best and Dennis Law probably would have been quite appealing to Pele. Another contender would have been Real Madrid, who were arguably the biggest club in the world at the time, having just won nine of the last 13 league titles, as well as winning their sixth European Cup earlier that year in the competition's 11th season. With Alfredo Di Stefano leaving in 1964 and Ferenc Puskas retiring in 1966, it's easy to see how they had room for another superstar like Pele. As well as this, Real Madrid played the same formation as both Santos and Brazil, making the move even more appealing to the Brazilian striker. For these reasons, I think it would be Real Madrid that would be Pele's choice for the transfer. In terms of fees, in 1961, Inter had set the world record when buying Luis Suarez from Barcelona for £152,000. Two years later, Roma smashed that record when buying Angelo Sormani for £250,000. However, given the reputation and talent of Pele, I believe Rounded would have 
absolutely destroyed the world record transfer fee and paid around £500,000 to bring him to the Bernabeu. So here is how Real Madrid looked across the next four seasons. As I mentioned, playing the 4-2-4 formation for the most part, which favoured Pele, who'd played that at Santos and Brazil. The one season they didn't play that formation in the 68-69 season, by all records I can find, they preferred Jose Luis in defence over the right winger of Chato Gonzalez. As you can see, they were largely successful in this period, winning three La Liga titles, as well as a single Copa del Generalissimo the next year. So here's where we begin to speculate. As always, these things are impossible to predict, but here's what I think may have happened. With the lineups, Amancio was key to Real Madrid's team at this time, so I think it would have been Grosso that stepped out to make room for Pele, playing alongside Amancio in the 66-67 season as well as the following season. In the 68-69 season, when Amancio went out to the right, I think Pele would have taken that single central position where Grosso played before moving back to the 4-2-4, alongside Flatus in 69-70. In the 66-67 season, Real Madrid won La Liga, but lost at the quarter-final stage of the European Cup and the Copa del Generalissimo. Interestingly, they won the La Liga by only losing two games to Real Zaragoza and Barcelona, both being 2-1 losses. With Pele in the team, it's not unreasonable to suggest that they would have avoided defeat in these two games and gone unbeaten, which would have been a massive milestone considering the last unbeaten team in Spain was in 1932. Again, Real Madrid, but only playing 18 games. No team has been unbeaten since 1932. In the Copa del Generalissimo, they lost in the court final over two legs to Valencia, losing both games, which may not have changed. And similarly, in the European Cup, they lost 1-0 and 2-0 to Inter in the quarterfinals. Inter being the best defensive side in Europe at the time, I doubt Pele would have got the three goals round with needed to progress. In terms of goals, Real Madrid's top scorer that season was Gento with just 11 goals. So it's easy to see that Pele probably would have scored more than that and been Real Madrid's top scorer. In the 67-68 season, Real Madrid again won the league but failed to repeat the previous season's unbeaten record. Uh, because they lost a few more games then and it would have been hard to maintain that consistency, although Pelé probably would have been Real Madrid's top scorer again. In the Copa del Generalissimo, they lost the final to Barcelona after conceding a sixth-minute own goal. I believe that Pelé would have been the difference to overturn that game and got them the trophy in that tournament. In the European Cup, they were knocked out by eventual winners Manchester United after a 1-0 loss at, at Old Trafford and a 3-3 free, free draw at the Bernabeu. With such a tight game, I think that Pelé may have been the difference and got Real Madrid past Manchester United to get them to the final and then they would have repeated Man United's success in the final by beating Benfica. This would lead to Real Madrid becoming the first ever Spanish team to win the treble, only the second team in Europe after Celtic had achieved it the previous season. Real Madrid have never in their history won the treble, so Pele would already be a Real Madrid legend. Going further than this, in 1968, George Best won the Ballon d'Or by helping Manchester United win the European Cup. With Pele's Real Madrid knocking them out at the semi-final, it would probably be most likely that it would be Pele that wins the Ballon d'Or in 1968. 
Going on to the 68-69 season and Real Madrid win their third successive La Liga title. In reality, they lost only a single game in a 1-0 to Elche. So it may be that with Pelé in the team, they again go unbeaten for the second time in three seasons. Across these years in Brazil, Pelé scored 68 goals in 75 games for Santos. So this may well be his best Real Madrid season. In the other competitions, it's harder to gauge what difference Pelé would have made due to the early exits. In the Copa del Generalissimo, they lost 2-1 over two legs to Atletico. They may have overturned this, but then Atletico lost to Real Sociedad in the next round, who then lost to Elche, who then lost to Bilbao. So it may be unlikely that Real Madrid go all the way. In the European Cup, they lost to Rapid Vienna on away goals, but then Rapid then lost 3-0 over two legs to Manchester United, who would go on to lose to eventual champions Milan. So again, they may well not make a difference with Pelé in their side and just finish the season with that single impressive La Liga title. And finally, in the 69-70 season, Real Madrid struggled, finishing sixth uh, due to several heavy losses in the February-March time of the season to Bilbao, Sabadell and Atletico. They were only off third place on goal difference, so Pele would likely get them up into third place by picking up an extra point or two here and there, but being seven points off the title may be a bit too much to ask, considering this is an era when it was two points for a win. So by modern standards, it's almost nine or ten points off the top. In other competitions, they would win the Copa del Generalissimo, as they did in real life by beating Valencia in the final. In the European Cup, it would be a similar story as last season. They lost both legs to Standard Liège, who then went and lost both legs to Leeds United. So it's unlikely that Pele would make the difference to get them any further in the tournament. Due to the unsuccessful nature of the season and Pele finishing the season by winning his third World Cup with Brazil, it would probably be the final season in Spain with Pele turning 30 later that year and opting to move back to Santos. Overall, I don't doubt for a second that Pele would have been a huge success at Real Madrid. He would have earned himself three La Liga titles, a European Cup and a Copa del Generalissimo, as well as winning the Ballon d'Or in 1968. More success than had he stayed at Santos where they won a single league title and three state league titles in that era. Interestingly, in that era, he played 135 games for Santos, scoring 103 goals, or a goal every 1.3 games. Using that standard of scoring, it may be fair to suggest that Pele would play around 115 games and get in 88 goals. At the time, this would have put Pele as round with sixth all-time top scorer, only behind Alfredo Di Stefano, Ferenc Puskas, Paco Gento, Pahino and Luis Maloney. But the key part of Pele's legacy at Real Madrid would have been those two unbeaten league titles. Although he was only in Madrid for four years, he would have been idolised by the fans and regarded as one of the club's greatest ever players. Having now been exposed to European football, Pele would be known to be the greatest player of all time until the era of Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo. Naturally, we can't know for sure what would have happened had Pele moved to Real Madrid in 1966, but he would have been a resounding success in my opinion, and the exposure in Europe to European fans would only boost his reputation. Thank you for listening. For more alternate football history, 
check out my other videos and don't forget to like and subscribe we're looking to get this channel going and once we've got some more videos with some more subscribers we can produce more videos more often with higher quality hope you enjoyed the video